Hi everyone, I'm Dave. Now today I'd like to tackle a problem in orthogonal subspaces. So the problem we'd like to tackle, uh, given a subspace S, and suppose S is spanned by two vectors, 1, 2, 2, 3, and 1, 3, 3, 2, uh, we have a question here which is to find a basis for S perp. S perp is another subspace which is orthogonal to S. And then secondly, can every vector in R4 be uniquely written in terms of S and S perp? So I'll let you think about this for now, and I'll come back in a minute. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. OK, so why don't we tackle this problem? OK, so first off, what does it mean for a vector to be an S perp? Well, if I have a vector x and S perp, and x is in S perp, what this means is x is going to be orthogonal to every vector in S. Now, specifically, S is spanned by these two vectors. So it's sufficient that X be perpendicular to the two uh, basis vectors in S. So specifically, I can take 1, 2, 2, 3 and dot it with X. And it's going to be 0. So I'm, writing, I'm treating X as a column vector here. In addition, x must also be orthogonal to 1, 3, 3, 2. So any vector x that's in s perp must be orthogonal to both of these vectors. So what we can do is we can write this as a matrix equation. And we do this by combining these two vectors as rows of the matrix. So if we step back and take a look at this equation, we see that what we're really asking is to find all x that are in the null space of this matrix. So how do we find x in the null space of a matrix? Well, what we can do is we can row reduce this matrix and try and find a basis for the null space. So I'm going to just row reduce this matrix. And notice that by row reduction, we don't actually change the null space of a matrix. So if I'm only interested in the null space, this system is going to be equivalent to, I can keep the top row the same. And then just to simplify our lives, we can take the second row and subtract one copy of the first row. Now if I do that, I obtain 0, 1, 1, minus 1. OK. Now, to parametrize the null space, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write x out as components. So if I write x with components x1, x2, x3, and x4, we see here that this matrix has a rank of 2. Now, we, we're looking uh, at vectors which live in R4. So we know that the null space is going to have a dimension which is 4 minus 2. So that means there should be two vectors in the null space of this matrix. To parametrize uh, these two-dimensional vectors, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let x4 equal some constant and x3 equal another constant. So specifically, I'm going to let x4 equal b and x3 equal a. Now what we do is we take a look at these two equations, and this bottom equation will say that x2 is equal to negative x3 plus x4, which is going to equal negative a x4 plus b. And then the top equation says that x1 is equal to negative 2 x2 minus 2x3 plus 3x4, sorry, 
minus 3x4. And if I substitute in, x2 is minus a plus b, x3 is a, and x4 is b. So when the dust settles, the a's cancel, and I'm left with minus 5b. OK, so we can combine everything together, and we end up obtaining x1, x2, x3, x4 equals minus 5b. x2 is minus a plus b. x3 is a, and x4 is b. And now what we can do is we can take this vector and we can decompose it into pieces which are a multiplied by a vector and b multiplied by a vector. So you'll note that this is actually a times 0 minus 1, 1, 0, plus b times minus 5, 1, 0, 1. OK? So we have successfully achieved a parameterization of the null space of this matrix as some constant a times a vector 0 minus 1, 1, 0, plus b times a vector minus 5, 1, 0, 1. And now we claim that this is the entire space s perp. So s perp is going to be spanned by this vector and this vector. Now notice how uh, if I were to take either of these two vectors in s and dot it with any vector uh, in the null space, by construction, it automatically vanishes. OK, so this concludes part one. Now for part two, can every vector v in R4 be written uniquely in terms of s and s perp? The answer is yes. So how do we see this? Well, if I have a vector v, what I can do is I can try and write it as some constant c1 times the vector 1, 2, 2, 3 plus c2 times a vector 1, 3, 3, 2 plus a vector c4, sorry, c3. 0 minus 1, 1, 0, plus c4, minus 5, 1, 0, 1. OK. So c1 uh, and c2 are multiplying the vectors in s, and c3 and c4 are multiplying the ve vectors in s perp. So the question is, given any v, can I find constants c1, c2, c3, c4, such that uh, this equation holds? And the answer is yes. Now notice how, uh, just, to see, just to see why it's yes, what we can do is we can rewrite this in uh, matrix notation. And there's kind of a handy trick. What I can do is I can take these uh, columns and write them as columns of a matrix. And this whole expression is actually equivalent to this matrix multiplied by the constant c1, c2, c3, c4. And on the right-hand side, we have the vector v. Now, by construction, these vectors are linearly independent. And we know from linear algebra that if we have a matrix with linearly independent columns, the matrix is invertible. What this means is for any v on the right-hand side, we can invert this matrix and obtain unique coefficients, c1, c2, c3, c4. This then gives us a unique decomposition for v in terms of a piece which is in s and a piece which is in s perp. 
And in general, this can be done for any vector space. Well, I'd like to conclude this uh, problem now, and I hope you had a good time.